Welcome back to the PTZ Camera Operator Handbook. In this video, we're talking about networking. And what is this? A network switch. We're going to learn all about the networking hardware, software, and language that's necessary to understand how to get your PTZ cameras on the network. We'll talk about the benefits of doing so and hopefully set you up for success in regards to video production on an IP network. So let's get started. As you know, we've gone through quite a few videos so far to get to this point. We talked about the industry, the parts of a PTZ camera. We opened a PTZ camera. We've gone over camera control options, how to mount the cameras, how to get a good exposure, how to control them. We've even gone into camera control automation and all the special features of a PTZ camera. But honestly, networking is probably one of the most important parts and I wanted to suggest a, a book for further learning. It's called The Unofficial Guide to NDI. NDI is one of the most popular IP video production protocols and has a lot to do with networking. If you feel like there's, you know, we're skipping over a lot of stuff, it's because there's an entire book that you can dig more into. You can download it for free in the Udemy course or you can uh, buy it on Amazon. So it's up to you how you like to kind of read and digest video. But let's get into, at a high level, you're going to hear something called the LAN. And the LAN is your local area network. Your local area network is a network of computers, right? And the, the head of the network, the brain of the network is usually like a router. And the router comes to you. In this case, it's being shown as a server, but Really, the router comes to you from your internet service provider. So that might be AT&T, it might be Verizon, it might be Comcast. There's lots of internet service providers out there that give you a router. You can plug in devices into it and therefore create a local area network. It's connected to the internet, so all these devices have internet access through your router, likely. But in general, these computers can communicate and those computers might actually be cameras. They might actually be video production software systems. The local area network may grow significantly as you start to think about what you can do with video production. So some common networking equipment you should know about. A is the router. That's kind of like the home base. It's the brains of the video production system or your local area network. And it manages all the devices on your network. So it manages your computers. It manages the cameras. It manages the IP addresses that each device needs to uniquely address each one and, and communicate. The network switch, what I was holding a little bit earlier, that is what expands the local area network. The router can be plugged into a network switch and the network switch allows you to plug in many different devices and additional devices. And in reference to PTZ cameras, a network switch can be power over ethernet enabled, a POE generally it's called POE network switch can actually power PTZ cameras and devices like lights and TVs and the list of POE devices grows every day. And then of course, there's wireless access points. So many internet routers include Wi-Fi. They include access to Wi-Fi, but in larger local area networks and networks in general, you can add more and more wireless access points to spread the access to Wi-Fi as well. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at an IP address table. This is something that you might want to manage yourself if you are the kind of the manager of a local area network, just to remember and keep in kind of the back of your mind and organize the devices on your local area network. The first one is the router itself. It's the network as a whole. In this case, it's 192.168.1.0. Or sorry, that's the router. That's the, um, the network as a whole. 192.168.1.1 is the router. So the very first address is the router. And um, all the other addresses up to 254 can be assigned to computers and devices and cameras and video production hardware and smartphones and almost anything that connects to your network is going to need an IP address to do so. And what we're going to look at is giving different cameras and devices, IP addresses, and then how we can use those addresses to control and connect all of our devices on our local area network. Now, as an example, this is a very simple home network. And there's a router, 
and it's connected to a smart TV. And the smart TV, once it's connected to the router, can now use Netflix, right? It can now access the internet. We can now see things and we don't even need to connect the Wi-Fi because we've ethernet connected hardwired into the router. Now, the Wi-Fi that is available is connecting to a MacBook Pro, it's connecting to a smartphone, and now all of those things are connected, and even the smartphone is connected to this system. And one thing I wanted to do is show how important this is from a perspective here. This is my Wi-Fi connection here, okay, on my phone, and if I hit the I button, uh, and learn a little bit more about my Wi-Fi, I can see, oh, it's not this one, it's the, it must be Cam 6. There we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and let it focus. I can see that the router is 192.168.1.1, just like our example. And my IP address of this phone is 192.168.1.24. Now, I can technically, I can have, when my phone connects to the Wi-Fi, it automatically receives an IP address. But you do have the option to manually set an IP address as well. And that is what we do with PTZ cameras because they're connected to the network and we need to know their IP address. If an, auto, if an IP address is automatically set, then as soon as the phone connects to the network, it gets an IP address, which is great. That's awfully convenient. But we might, it might change. It might be one, one day it's this IP address and one day it's the next. And we need to know the IP addresses of our devices in order to control them. So if we look at this presentation here, now we're seeing a little bit more advanced network. It's not a ton more advanced, but we've got a network switch in the middle, which we assume is connected to a router. And now I've got a couple more things connected. We've got a PTZ camera. We've got an access point. We've got a computer. And we've got a smartphone. And in order for the smartphone and the computer to connect to the PTZ camera, we need to know the IP address of the camera. Just like the smartphone has an IP address, the PTZ camera needs to have an IP address. And once we have that IP address and we know the IP address of that camera, then we can put it into our smartphone or our software that we're using. Okay, I know this camera is 192.168.60. I put that information in. Now I can control the camera. Okay, and that's the way IP video kind of works at a high level. And we might have multiple PTZ cameras. We might have an IP joystick, right? And the IP joystick is going to need to know. Let's go to our ceiling camera here. It's going to need to know the IP address of the camera. All right, and the, actually the joystick itself has an IP address. That's 192.168.70. So the joystick has an IP address. And why does the joystick have an IP address? Well, we might want to go to that camera. We might want to go to that camera and type it in, or sorry, that IP address. And what does that do? It brings up the joystick controller. And we can now look at the joystick controller. We can now put in the PTZ camera uh, IP addresses and everything starts to work. So this is at a high level. Again, another example video network. Let's say we've got a router. It's got the first IP address in the network. We've got an access point. We've got a network switch. We have multiple different cameras, a joystick, and then we've got multiple different computers and each device has an IP address. That's the, that's the takeaway here. It's all connected. Now there are tools for searching your network for PTZ cameras. So if your network has a PTZ camera on it and you're not sure what the IP address is, you can use an IP address settings tool from the camera manufacturer you work with to search the network, find the camera, and set a static IP address for that camera. You can also follow the steps, if you remember in our earlier uh, presentation. If you remember, we set a PTZ camera preset with an IR remote control. You can also set a the camera to uh, DHCP to get an automatically receive an IP address from the network, from your router, using the IR remote control. So if you remember that, or if you want to refer back to the chapter on the IR remote, you can use the IR remote control, 
or you can use the software that comes with your camera. Now, it's when you do have the IP address of the camera, you can type it into a web browser interface. And we've done that here. Um, I, this is a camera, it's at 192.168.60. And we can see, oh, look at that. We can see the video from the camera. We can control the camera here. We can move it left and right. We can zoom in and out. We can adjust things like the image, the audio. We can change the password if we so choose. Um, we can check the networking settings. This is where we can finally start streaming directly to YouTube or Facebook, for example. Uh, all this information is in here. And then another important piece is the device ID. We need to know that. The firmware for the device so we can figure out you know, what is the firmware that we need? The serial number, all of this good information is all stored on the web browser interface for the camera. Now, the device ID is important to update because if you've got three or four or five cameras on your network, you update that device ID, you give the camera a friendly name, right? A name that you want to recognize it by, and it helps you in creating a Google Sheet, for example, or an Excel sheet to organize this information. So as you start to get your cameras on your network, you're setting up those IP addresses, you want to organize them into a table of information. What is the camera's IP address? What is the multicast address? Well, we haven't even discussed multicast yet, so I'll brief you on it. Multicast is a delivery of video. It's a method to deliver video to multiple different places at the same time without increasing the bandwidth. So if there's 20 or 30 or 100 people that want to see the video from a specific camera, they can do so using multicast. Um, and there is a specific, just like an IP address, there is a multicast address as well. But in this Google Sheet, just at a high level, you've got the camera's IP address, you've got the camera's friendly name potentially, you've got the camera model, you've got the location potentially, maybe an SDI input on your video switcher. These are the types of things that we keep. And then so you keep all of that um, organized. And you can even see here, like the first camera is 192.168.1.20. The second camera is 192.168.1.21. We keep it sequential so that it's very simple and easy to, to use. Now, another big tip I will give is organizing the cameras with a label maker. Um, this is something that I do. So when you set the IP address, then you label it because you're going to want to go back to it. You're going to want to reference it. Sometimes, you know, you got your Google Sheet. You can open it up and look at it. But also other times you might want to just peek at the camera and say, what is that IP address? Okay, it's right there on the side. Another thing you can do is you can do, you can label your joystick, right? So camera one is number 30. Camera two is the 20X. Camera three is the 30X. For example, example, that helps you to organize your cameras. Now, I have a couple videos that I think will be helpful for you guys that have done in the past that will help you learn how to set up video production hardware with IP networking equipment. Now, the first one here is called Affordable NDI Networking Hardware. This is two pieces of hardware that are like in the neighborhood of like $100 each, a TP-Link Archer router and a TP-Link PoE networking switch. So that you can scan that QR code right there and watch that video. And I walk you through how to set up this router, how to set up this network switch to work, not just for IP video, but for NDI, which again is a, a really popular IP video production protocol. And a lot of times you do need to have a network set up to use it. Now I did another video, which is a little bit more advanced. This one is on the Netgear video switches, the M4250s. And these Netgear switches are really popular, um, but they're more expensive, but they come fully configured for NDI and out of the box, they just work great. Now, when we're talking about networking, I also want to mention NTP time servers. And what is an NTP time server? Well, there's, they, they exist for Windows and they exist for Mac. They're actually some of the, mo the oldest protocols in networking for computers. And what they do is they synchronize computers so that they are speaking the same language at the same exact time of day. And this is crucial when you're adding multiple PTZ cameras 
to a network, they all need to have the same time protocol or else things can kind of go out of sync. So we've got, again, another video for deeper learning if you want to look up how to set up NTPT time servers so that your video from your cameras being received in different computers all have the same timestamps that will allow you to sync multiple IP videos together. Now, I want to also mention there's a whole chapter on this um, that was a guest chapter from Matthew Davis. It's an important chapter to understand how to really, really fine tune your PTZ cameras to work properly on a network. So there's no uh, online course on this one, just a really great video. You can scan that QR code and watch that. So key takeaways here. Networking is creating a ton of new opportunities in video production. So it, clearly you can control your cameras with a smartphone. All the things we talked about with controlling it with vMix, OBS, Wirecast, all those softwares, it just doesn't work without networking in many, in many cases. So it may seem complicated, but you get more and more familiar with networking the more that you learn about it. So I think that this chapter that we've provided on networking is enough to get you started with PTZ cameras. And then I, I, I encourage you to watch some of those additional videos that I mentioned so that you can really get a deeper understanding of networking. If you're thinking, wow, this is really great. This is working really well. The unofficial guide to NDI is an entire book and online course where you can take your knowledge further on NDI and IP video. And that's where I would really highly recommend learning even more about networking. Once your PTZ cameras are set up on the network, they're easy to configure. You can, you can do everything that you should be able to do. If you're not getting your cameras on the network, you are missing out on a lot of features and that's just the way it is. These cameras are most PTZ cameras, not all. Some PTZ cameras don't have networking capabilities and then you're not missing out on anything. But if they do have networking capabilities, you should set them up on your network. You should figure out how your computer can get access to them because it is kind of becoming the future of video production. All right, we've still got a lot more to talk about. We're doing some more deep dives into the innovations in PTZ cameras, including NDI. We're going to give you a briefer on it. Not a whole online course and a whole book's worth of content, but a briefer on it. We'll talk about SRT, Secure Reliable Transport, and more. So let's get to it, guys. I'll see you in the next video.